Hey everyone, it's me Nita and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm prepping for a few upcoming craft fairs slash markets um, for the holiday season. So I have one market next weekend, so I need to get it, the last few things that I want to get prepped for this market finalized in the next couple days. Um, and then I have, as of right now, I believe just two markets um, in December so I definitely need to find some more markets to do for the month of December but I'm excited today because some of the stuff that I'm bringing to this market I haven't sold before so I'm kind of curious to see how well these items will sell so in today's video I'm gonna be prepping um, some mouse pads some keychains and some coasters I'm gonna be using sublimation to sublimate a bunch of different cute designs some holiday some just normal regular designs um, that I think will sell well at a market. Um, so we are just going to be sublimating a ton of stuff tonight. So hopefully I can get everything done tonight because um, I have so much to prep still for. I need to prep more tumblers. I need to prep a ton of tote bags, hats, shirts, just a ton of stuff. So uh, the next few days are going to be extremely busy for me. And I also have a ton of Etsy orders. I think of as of right now, I have 70 open Etsy orders, so I'm very busy right now. So I'm going to spend this a couple hours before bed tonight just working on this. And then and then the rest of the other stuff that I have to prep, we'll just do in the next few days. But let's just go ahead and focus on this stuff. I'm going to go over my supplies that I'm going to be using and then show you the designs that I'll be using as well. And then we'll get started. Um, a lot of these designs I did purchase off of design bundles. The ones that I purchased off des design bundles, I will leave them down below for you guys. A lot of these images are called like seamless patterns. You can use seamless patterns for a variety of different things, tumblers, fabric. In this video, these are really easy sublimation projects. Hopefully, they seem to be really easy. Um, and then I'm also using um, a smaller Epson Eco Tank. So these are, but these projects that I'm doing tonight are really good for printers that don't print large images or on large pieces of sublimation paper. Um, so if you only have a printer that prints on eight and a half by 11 or eight and a half by 13, these projects are perfect for smaller printers. So anyways, let's go ahead and let's get started. So let's go ahead and talk about the printer that I'm going to be using. I'm using an Epson 2760 Eco Tank. So I don't remember how much I purchased this printer for, but again, I'm going to leave all the product links down below for you guys. You guys can definitely go check that out. But it was very inexpensive, not too not too pricey. So this printer was a really affordable option for me. So I went with this one. I do plan on upgrading my sublimation printer down the road. Um, I'm really content with this one as of right now. Of course, I want to be able to print bigger images. Um, but for the most part, a lot of the stuff that I do doesn't really require like my printer to my printer to print more or bigger than an eight and a half by 11. The only thing I don't like about this printer, it does leave little black ink marks on my paper occasionally, not all the time, but occasionally. So for example, like right here, it will leave like these little black splatter marks. If you know what, if you know what causes that, please let me know. Cause I would love to try and like figure out how I can fix that or if it's fixable because it's a pain because sometimes I will ruin a whole print job because of these little black marks. Um, I'm gonna be using some heat tape. Um, I love this little tape dispenser. It makes it super handy when doing um, a ton of projects that require a decent amount of tape. This makes it a lot easier and it cuts it to little tiny pieces already for you. So I love this little tape dispenser. I am using heat tape. Um, I got this pink heat tape from Craft Express and it works pretty good. For my sub paper, I use Koala sublimation paper, the eight and a half by 11 sheets. Um, I've been using this for a while now. I haven't had too many issues with the Koala brand. Um, typically I use a sub sublimation paper. I like it. I just wish it was a little bit thicker. One thing I like about the A-sub paper is that it's a little bit thicker and not as like flimsy. And then for my ink that I use, I use Printer's Jack ink. Um, I just had to refill my ink on my sublimation, sublimation printer, so I have that out um, and set aside because I had my husband just do that. So 
Um, that's the ink that I use. And then for the things I'm going to be sublimating tonight, um, I have these like coasters. They are kind of they are kind of smaller than I was expecting, but I do believe these are supposed to be used for like inside of your car where you would like put your drinks. Um, but I feel like these are okay. I just wish they were a little bit bigger. So you could um, always personalize these, sell these as like a set. Um, so you can make a lot of different type of coasters. These would be good like for wedding presents, wedding gifts, um, Christmas gifts. Um, in today's video, I'm just using just basic patterns because I'm gonna be selling these at the market, so I don't really wanna offer personalized options um, since I won't be able to fulfill them at the craft fair. So um, I'm just gonna do basic designs on these coasters. And then I also have this keychain set. It comes with a little wristlet keychain and then it also comes with a chapstick holder. So I still need to purchase chapstick because I wanna sew the keychains with like just like a basic, basic chapstick because I'm not sure if many customers will know exactly what this is. So I think if I already have the chapstick in there, they'll be more enticed to purchase a little wristlet keychain. So. Um, I've never sublimated on any, either one of these, so I'm kind of curious how these will turn out. A follower actually purchased these for me off my Amazon wish list. Um, so if you're watching this and you purchased these for me, you purchased these a long, long, long time ago. But I'm now just finally having time to mess around with these. So again, thank you for purchasing these off of my Amazon wish list. And then um, I also have these mouse pads as well. These are the A-Sub brand mouse pads. And again, I'll have all of these linked down below. Koala was actually nice enough to send out the sublimation paper and these mouse pads a long time ago. And I just, again, haven't had time to mess around with them, but I'm gonna be playing around with these tonight as well. For heat presses, I am using my Signature Pro. This is from Heat Press Nation. I love, love this heat press. It is has like an automatic pop-up feature and then it also pulls out too. I love this heat press. You don't need a big heat press to do any of these projects. So if you also have a smaller heat press, these projects will work wonderful on a smaller heat press. Okay, so let's look at the designs that I'm gonna be making tonight. Now I'm not gonna make all of these tonight. Um, whatever I don't use, I could save for future projects or for tumblers as well. So I wanted to go with a bunch of different like retro designs. All have They all have like a peachy pink tone to them. So um, I have like this checkered one, this retro gaming one, this peach one, smiley, smiley faces, some animal print ones. I even printed out some Christmas themed ones. I don't think I'm gonna do this one on a mouse pad and I think I'll do this one on a tumbler in a different video but I printed it out just to see how it would look on paper um, and these all look really dull which is completely normal. They won't be vibrant until they're actually pressed on whatever item you press them on so don't let the color throw you off. Um, so I am gonna pick out 10 of the larger sheets um, for the mouse pads. The mouse pads fit perfectly on an eight and a half by 11. So I just printed on the full sheet of paper. Um, so yeah. And then I have more patterns over here. I have like a succulent one, strawberries. And then I also did the same images, but a little bit smaller um, for the wristlet keychains. So I really like how this one turned out. I actually prefer this one over it being bigger. And basically what I did is I opened it up on Adobe Illustrator and um, the seamless pattern come, came as like this little chunk. And then because it's seamless, you won't see like any of the seams. So basically I just made the image a lot smaller and copied and pasted them and organized them and yeah. I was able to make two different sizes. So I really like how the smaller one looks. I did the same thing with the strawberries. So you can see the size difference. I have a plaid one. 
here's like a difference between the animal print versus a bigger one. So this wasn't too hard to do. I'm not going to show that in this video how I did it. Um, but if you're curious on how to adjust seamless patterns to make them like a, a seamless pattern, um, just let me know down in the comments and I'll try and make a video on how to do that. But it was super easy to do. Um, but I think that's it for supplies. Um, you will need some heat resistant gloves so some of these. Um, and I think that's it. Um, I do have my heat press currently warming up to 400 degrees. I will be pressing most of these items for 60 seconds. Some of them I'll have to press for like two minutes. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on prepping the mouse pads and then the other, the other items as well. Okay, so here's an example of one mouse pad that I did already. This was just a, a practice one. I did mess up right here. I didn't have the print all the way down on uh, the mouse pad, so it shows a little white right there. Um, and then this is just like a watercolor design, so it does look a little bit blotchy, but um, that's just how the design is. But I really like how it turned out. Um, so with these mouse pads, they do come individually wrapped, which I do like because um, I do plan on doing like a little pricing sticker on these, so I won't have a sign for how much like these items are going to be. I'm just gonna have the mouse pads in these little plastic sleeves, so I'm gonna save these and put them back in there once I'm done supplementing on them, and then I'm gonna add like a little sticker um, to this sheet to show what the price is. Um, I don't know how much I'm gonna charge for these yet. I have to see how much they are on Amazon to see like how much the supplies are and factor all that in. But I'm thinking maybe like $10, maybe eight at the lowest, I'm not sure, but I need to obviously look at the pricing and factor all that stuff in. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taping these down. So again, these eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper work perfect um, for these mouse pads because you just put it right on. There is a little bit of overhang, which isn't an issue. So I'm just gonna put a piece of tape on all four sides. Just like that. And then when I sublimate it, I'm gonna sublimate it um, with the design um, facing upwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do the rest of these. I'm having trouble deciding which designs I wanna do. So. The first market that I'm going to next weekend is going to be at a church, like a, a, but it's also a school as well, like a private school. So there's gonna be a ton of kids there. So I'm gonna try and do kiddish designs for these or designs possibly maybe a teacher would like. I'm not really sure what to expect. Um, this church actually reached out to me on Instagram and offered to have me be a vendor at their event for free. So one thing really nice about this event is I don't have to pay any type of booth fee. Um, I am gonna talk to the director or whoever's holding the event to see if I can donate like some stuff to see if they're gonna do like a raffle or something like that. And I'll just donate some stuff from my booth for like a raffle if they have one, we'll see. But it's an, a Christmas lighting event. Um, so it's just, it's going to be a family event. So I'm going to try and do mouse pads for like kids or for the family. So I'm going to do these animal print ones. This one, I think I'm going to save for a tumbler. I don't know if I want to do gingerbread men. I think that'll look really cute as a mouse pad, but I'm not sure how seasonal mouse pads would do. Um, if I were to purchase a mouse pad, I probably wouldn't purchase a seasonal one, so I might save this one for a tumbler. Anything with happy faces I feel like would do good. And then this peach one, not like super obsessed with this pattern, but we'll see. Um, so I have two, four, six, seven. So I have seven here. I need one more. So I guess from out of these two, I'll pick the gingerbread man. We'll see how it sells. If it sells well, I'll know that I need to purchase more mouse pads and do this design um, for 
the other two markets and any other potential markets that I do. So I think these eight designs will do good. So I'm going to go ahead and tape the rest of these. My heat press is almost done warming up. So once it's done, we'll press all of these mouse pads. to mention too. I need a lint roller and I need a lint roll. I totally forgot. Whenever I do sublimation that's one thing I always forget to do. Luckily I don't do too many sublimation projects but I'm hoping to get into sublimation more for next year um, because sublimation is a ton of fun and it's super easy to do and you can sublimate so many different things. Like, there's an endless amount of projects you could do. Okay, I also forget to mention you need butcher paper as well. Um, so, I actually need to get more butcher paper. I'm almost out, but I'm hoping I have enough to be able to do these projects. You are supposed to switch out your butcher paper for every project that you do. Um, so, hopefully, I have enough. Okay. So when I have my paper facing upward, I have one piece of butcher paper on the bottom, and then I have one for the top, and then I'm going to go ahead and heat press it with medium pressure at 400 degrees for one minute. Now some of these projects, a pressing pillow would come in handy. Fortunately, I don't have one, so I'm a little worried about how these ones will turn out. I'm hoping that they turn out okay. Um, because of the metal rings, you would want to use like a pressing pillow, but we'll see how everything turns out. Okay. Here is the first design. Ooh, that one came out nice. Okay, this is hot. I need my gloves. Okay, the colors on this one. Oh my gosh, I love it. And as you can see, definitely want to put a piece of paper down on the bottom. Um, because that will, because that mess will get onto your heat press and you don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and put that old one on the bottom. Just because I don't want to waste too much because I only have a little bit left. Go ahead and do the rest of these and I'm going to go ahead and speed it up and I'll show you guys how these all turn out at the very end. Here, here is the succulent one. I really love how this one turned out. Okay, so for some reason there is something on this mouse pad. I think it's actually a piece of HTV from when I did a t-shirt, so I don't know how that got on there, but um, this one I could either sell as like an oopsie or I might just keep it for myself, honestly, but here's this one. A lot of the designs I picked are retro, so they are gonna have that faded, um, like tannish look to them. But I really love how this one turned out. Okay, I really love how this one turned out. I think the sizing too on the seamless pattern is perfect for this mouse pad. So cute. Okay, 
Here's this one. I think my heat press is big enough to do multiple ones. So, let's see. This will just help make things go a lot faster because I still have a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff to do. This one I feel like will definitely be cute on a tumbler, so I definitely plan on making a tumbler with this design. Okay, so here is the strawberry one. This is another um, like watercolor design, so it does look like it's faded in certain spots, but that, that's just the design and how it's supposed to look. But there is a little bit of ghosting right here um, because my heat press keeps popping up. I don't know why it keeps popping up, but uh, that causes a little bit of ghosting. But it's not super noticeable. I still think it's sellable. And then this one came out so nice. I'm really looking forward to seeing how this one turns out on the keychains and the coasters. Like, really love these things. I really love this pattern. Okay, so here are the mouse pads. I think they turned out pretty good. I just had a couple mishaps. Um, I had this one for some reason. There was like a random piece of HTP that was that stuck onto there. So this one I'll either keep or I'll just mark as like an oopsies and do like a really discounted price for it. Um, I just really love how everything turned out. I really love the gingerbread man. And then these ones. Holy moly, the color on that and the detail. It's one thing I really love about sublimation because the color is just so vibrant. And that one, this one's really cute. This one came out a little darker, more like of an orangish color. I was hoping more of like a peachy pink. Um, so I think I heat pressed this one for a little bit too long. But I really love how these turned out, but but let's go ahead and do these coasters now and let's see how these turn out. Okay, so for the coasters, I definitely want to do this one. I think I want to do the Gingerbread Man. There's so many choices. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do these ones. So basically what I'm going to do is I separated them into like groups. So yeah, we'll see how many I can fit to a page. So I think I'm gonna cut these actually up into strips. Let me see. And I kind of just place them basically where I'd want like a strawberry to be. So hopefully I place these good enough. Okay, I'm just gonna set these ones off to the side. I'm going to save this strip. I might use it for another coaster. I might use it for a different project. I don't know yet, but I'm gonna set it over here.
Okay, so my dogs have the zoomies really bad right now, so they're acting crazy in the background. I don't mind them. But just like how we did the mouse pads, um, we're gonna do it basically the same exact way. I'm gonna go ahead and flip these. Hopefully they also fit. Okay. I'm able to fit quite a bit on my heat press. Hopefully this will make things go by quickly. They still have all the keychains that I still need to do, so we still got a, a lot to do. Okay, so these, I don't like how they turned out because my heat press popped up midway through, so a lot of, so a lot of these ghosted, so I don't know if I want to sell these ones. Let's see how the other ones turned out. <sighs> I think I need to fix the tension on this heat press. Yeah, so all these ghosted. What a waste. Okay, so let's try this again with different ones. Hopefully we won't have any ghosting this time. I am going to push down on the heat press to ensure that it doesn't like pop up again. See how these ones turned out. These ones turned out much, much, much better. Okay, so these ones came out really nice, just like the mouse pads. I like how those turned out. Um, these two, so again, I was hoping for more of like a, sorry my camera's not focusing. So I was hoping for more of like a pinkish color, but these turned out more like, just like a peach, peach color, more orangish than rather than like a pink. So I don't know if it has to do with my printer or if I'm not, hate pressing these correctly, I don't know, but these ones came out okay, not my favorite. These definitely are my favorite ones, though. Okay, now I'm gonna do the gingerbread man and the, the Christmas light one. Okay, so I really love how the gingerbread men came out. I really love how these turned out. And you know what, I still forgot to lint roll these, but they still came out good, so no complaints on the gingerbread men. Okay, so not all of these came out perfectly because of the tape. Somehow the tape must have got trapped underneath the coaster. So some of these do have like little white marks on them, so I won't be able to sell that one. But these ones came out cute. I like these ones. So I am just gonna pick out the ones that are sellable. But I'm impressed with these ones too, so. I'm excited to do this print on a tumbler. I think for the tumbler, I'll end up making the lights a little bit bigger, I think. Um, but these ones came out good, no complaints. I actually have three more that I didn't notice that I had, so I'm gonna go ahead and press these real quick on this one. I 
Okay, so here are the coasters. Even though I did waste quite a few, um, I still feel like these came out really cute. I think next time, instead of ta taping them all to like a big sheet, I think I'm going to cut the paper individually for each of the coasters. I think they'll just turn out better that way. But I really love how these turned out. So these, again, are gonna, I'm probably gonna charge like a dollar for these and I'm just gonna have like a little basket um, that just has like a little sign on it that says $1 coasters. So hopefully these will sell. I honestly don't know if these will sell at all. I'm hoping that because it'll be a dollar people will purchase them, but I don't know. I don't know how coasters do at markets. If you've sold, sold these before, or if you sell these, please let me know how you guys do with these. Like, are these popular? Um, I don't know, but I really wanted to try these out and um, if they do, of course, sell well at a market or if I list them on my website or on Etsy, I will definitely sell these if they sell well at a market, but we'll, we shall see how they do. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit worried on doing these wristlet keychains because look, some of them are like all like, bent up and crooked. These ones might do okay. So with these ones, I'm, I think I'm going to cut the paper so it fits just the keychain. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to go through and cut up the paper. So we'll fit these individually. I don't think I'm going to be able to get through all these tonight. And then these ones that are all bent, I don't even think these are usable. Let me try pressing some of these and getting these flattened. We'll see if it works or not. Um, but I'll be, I'll be right back. Okay, so with these, I cut them um, just to fit basically the keychain. Now, if you have a pattern that's directional, just keep in mind when you are taping them together um, which ones are directional or not. So um, let's go ahead and just heat press one to see if this method works. So I'm just going to tape all the sides. And for these keychains, again, I would recommend getting a pressing pillow. Unfortunately, I don't have one. I did watch on YouTube, there are some like DIY ones you can make, but I just did not fill up to make one tonight. So we'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and test just this one real fast to see how it turns out. Um, hopefully it works. Okay, so let's see how this turned out. And again, I forgot to lint roll it again, guys. <laughs> I'm never going to remember, but... Ah! Okay, this side came out perfect. The other side, though, I didn't. I'm missing, like, just a little bit of the paper on here. So I need to really need to make sure that I get the whole sublimation blank on, like, the sublimation design so I don't have that happen. But this came out pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and prep the rest of these. These are gonna take a little bit of time, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it real fast without recording, um, and then I will check, and then I'll check back in with you guys once I'm done prepping all of these. Um, I'm thinking I'll be able to heat press a bunch of them just because I have a bigger heat press, so I should be able to fit quite a bit of the keychains on here, but yeah, I'll check back in with you in a few. Okay guys, so I got quite a few done. Um, I just have to heat press them. I still have a ton left over. I just ran out of sublimation paper um, and I don't feel like printing out any more designs because these designs take out, they, because these designs take forever to print out. So I'm getting kind of tired. So I think I'm going to just heat press these. These I could either just save for another market or sublimate them a different day. I don't know yet, I haven't decided. But I'm going to go ahead and heat press these real fast and then we'll be all done. Okay, so I'm not going to heat press all of these all at once. I'm just going to do a few at a time. Oh, 
way this works out okay. I'm not sure if I should be doing these individually. We shall see. But again, I'm going to heat press these for one minute and then I'm gonna flip them and do the other side just like how I did this little keychain. I'm gonna do the same thing again for everything. Um, but yeah. So I don't know, I probably, I might just sell these for a dollar without the chapstick. But again, I'm not sure if people are gonna know if these are used for chap, like I don't know if people know that these are a chapstick holder. So I might like go to the Dollar Tree and purchase chapstick or maybe look on Amazon and try and see if they have like wholesale um, chapstick where you can buy like a bunch at once. Um, hopefully they have something like that, but if I do that, I'll definitely have to charge more for these. For these little wristlets, I'll probably charge like $2 maybe? I don't know. Again, I have to look and break down all the pricing and see how much I need to charge for each of these. And I'll look at, um, once I'm all done with these, I'll look and see how much each of these costs. I'm going to flip these all real fast. I'm gonna go for another minute. Even personalize these as well. If you like, if you want to sell these on Etsy, you could totally like add names to them, like numbers um, for like kids who play sports. Um, you can do a lot of different things. But these little keychains, you can do so much with them. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out. This one came out cute. Ah, again, I didn't line it up perfectly, so here's another mess up. You just have to really make sure that you line everything up. And I'm like still really new to sublimation, so of course things aren't gonna be perfect. This one, it didn't get any of the sublimation at the crease, so I don't know if I'm gonna sell that one. This one came out perfect. Ah! So, oh no, wait, no, it didn't come out perfect. Look, I don't know how I missed, how I missed that. Ah, I thought I did these I taped these really good but somehow they're shifting and you just really need to make sure that every inch of the keychain is touching the design on the television paper. Let's see how this one turned out. That last one would have been really cute too. So this one came out good. I think that one's cute. Again with a crease, that's an issue. So I just need to make sure that I really tape down the design and make sure that it kind of like, not overlaps, but definitely that the ink is touching the, the blank. Okay, so this one came up good. This peach checkered one came out really good. So some of these came out perfect. It's just a few of them. And again, this is like my first time doing these, so of course I'm gonna have some mess ups. And then, oh. Seriously, this pattern is like my, my favorite. <laughs> I wanna sublimate everything with this cheetah print because the colors just look so good. Okay, so some of these I'm able to keep and will be able to sell. These other ones, I don't know what to do. I might just sell them and just have them at a, like 25 cents or something. I don't know. Okay, let's do this last batch. Hopefully most of these come out good. So I feel like I didn't get a lot, a lot that I can use and sell. So we'll see.
Okay, so let's see how these last ones turned out. Hoping that I have some good ones. I, as of right now, I don't have a lot. Luckily, I still have a bunch left over. So I could try and sublimate on those again. But this one came out good. Very cute. Again. Okay, so I really have to watch my taping and making sure that there's no white. This one again came out perfect. Let's see how the wristlet, this wristlet turned out. Perfect. So I definitely got a couple good ones. This strawberry one came out perfect. Ah, did it upside down. Guys, it's too late for me. I shouldn't be crafting this late. But I was really excited to craft because I finally made time to just do some crafting and not working on orders so I was really excited to do these tonight and of course the video game one came out good again really love this one okay so I was able to get a few um, def I'm not gonna do the rest tonight but I definitely will do the rest before my next market um, and then the ones that were mess ups some of these I could still sell but some of these, I don't know. That one's good. And then that one's good. Um, I'll go ahead and sell that one too. So, I got quite a few of the keychains. And then I still have a ton. Oops, I still have one more. I still have a ton of these left. Alright guys, so that's going to be the rest of this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know a lot of you guys may not be into sublimation, but... I've been having a lot of fun with it, so I have a ton more things that I plan on sublimating. I have tumblers, mugs, some Christmas ornaments that I need to sublimate. So stay tuned for those videos because I'm taking a lot of sublimated items with me to a market and I'm hoping that they sell well. I will be filming a video showing you guys everything that I'm going to be taking with me to my markets um, because I am taking a bunch of different new things. Typically I take scrunchies and that's what I primarily focus on when selling but the last few markets I've been bringing t-shirts and a bunch of different other items and I'm bringing a lot more to these next new markets so I will definitely share all that stuff with you guys to help give you guys ideas on things for things to take with you to markets um, and then I also will be filming my market vlog um, for my market that's happening this weekend and I'll give you guys a recap and let you guys know what sold what didn't sell and how much I made so definitely keep a lookout for that market video um, I'm really excited to see how this market goes hopefully it goes well and hopefully they'll invite me back again um, just because it's super local to me and so that'd be really nice to have a really close local market to me but yeah so if you haven't already make sure to like this video make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the upcoming market vlogs and market recap videos that I have planned so I will see you guys in the next one bye mm -hmm.